Just a really quick announcement before we get going. Our popular Basics 2020 learning package update has been released. It contains an ebook, video tutorials, a Revit template, and an exercise project. Basics is the most fun and efficient way to learn Revit. Download the package at revitpr.com basics or check the link in the description below. How to create a yes no dot schedule in Revit. In this example, we're going to showcase the technique on the restoration of windows for a historic building. Each dot will represent a specific intervention for each window. When you begin the process, you should have a window schedule that contains the mark, height and width parameters. The first step is to go to the Manage tab and click on Project Parameters. Then click on the Add button. Type in the name of the parameter. In this example, we use a prefix that contains a letter and a number. Group the parameter under Other, or any group of your choice. Then switch the type of parameter to Yes slash No. Finally, assign the parameter to the Windows category. Make sure the parameter is set to Instance. It should be the default option. Repeat the same process for all the parameters you need. We will speed up the video a little bit. When you are done, select one of the window. In the Instance parameters, you should see all the new parameters you have created. As you notice, the boxes will be grey by default. That means the value is neither yes or no, it is void. To set a value, you will have to click on a box. It will become black, which means a value is assigned. The next step is to add the parameters to the window schedule. Double click on the schedule to go inside of it. Click on the fields button to enter the menu. Scroll down to find the new parameters, then use the green arrow to move the parameters inside your schedule. As a little side note, it's good to have the values centered. Select all the fields and set center in the Align Horizontal menu. If you go back to your sheet, you will see that the parameters are displayed as simply yes or no. That's when we will do a little magic to add the dots. Double click on the schedule again and go back to the fields menu. Now we will create a calculated value by clicking on the FX button. Give a name to the calculated value. In this case, we use the exact same name as the original parameter, except we add an X in the prefix. Change the type of parameter to text. Click on the three little dots and select the first intervention parameter. Now we're going to add an if statement. This is how if statement works. You set a condition, then you see what happens if the answer is yes and what happens if the answer is no. In this case, a certain text value will be displayed. Type if and beginning of parenthesis before the parameter name. Then type in a comma followed by two quotation marks. Then another comma, another two quotation marks. You now need to insert the dot symbol. You will find the symbol in the description of the video, so feel free to copy and paste from there. When we try to complete, we get a little warning. Just forgot to end with a parenthesis symbol. This is what the complete formula should look like. Use the blue arrows to move the new calculated value parameter. Try the new parameter by checking and unchecking the boxes to see if it works. You can make sure the new parameter is centered. Then create the other calculated values parameters required in the schedule. You can copy and paste part of the formula to save a little bit of time. Let's fast forward a little bit. All the calculated values parameters are now created. Try them all to make sure they are properly working. Now we need to duplicate the window schedule. There are going to be two schedules, one to be placed on a sheet and one to work inside of it. Rename the duplicated schedule to indicate it is to be used internally. Now go back to the original schedule. Go to the formatting menu. Select all the original parameters and check the hidden field box. Only the dots will remain. You can also make sure the column elements are centered. The schedule is almost complete.
You can also use the formatting menu to rename the headers. You probably don't want to see the prefix when placed on the sheet, so just type in whatever you want. In this case, a short description of the intervention to be done on each window. You should also change the heading orientation to vertical. Go back to the schedule and adjust the dimensions of the columns. Something interesting you can do is to group the headers of the interventions together. Select all the interventions parameters. Click on the group button in the ribbon. Enter the name intervention or whatever you'd like to use. Our dot schedule is now complete. But what if you want something a little more simple? You could replace the short sentences to letters instead and refer to a legend. We go back to the formatting menu and change all the sentences to letters. We set the heading orientation back to horizontal. That's another way to do it. Finally, maybe you just don't like dots. What if you want another symbol? You can use Windows Character Map menu to select and copy special characters. Just type in Character Map in the Windows search bar to find the tool. In this case, we will scroll to find the check mark. Copy the character. Go back to the calculated value formula by clicking on the pencil icon. Paste the check character to replace the dot. Repeat the same process for all the calculated values. If you want, you can also set a special character for all values listed to no. In this case, we will simply type in a little x in the formula. If there are some missing symbols, make sure there are no gray checkboxes left in the original schedule. Isn't that a cute little schedule? If you like this video, make sure to check out our brand new Basics 2020 Learning Package. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel.